What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry at TJR Sim here, and today we are looking at the um, Dirt Rally 2.0 uh, setup for the AccuForce uh, V2, in particular the Pro, the V2 Pro. And so this game's actually had some mixed reviews and stuff for it. I actually really enjoy Dirt Rally 2.0. It's, it's probably one of the games I've I've been waiting for for a while for them to come out with. Uh, a uh, evolution of the Dirt Rally one, nah, but not all things are, are, are perfect in this new field. I'll take this off so I can hear myself talk uh, and not yell at you. <laughs> but um, not everything is perfect in there. The force feedback settings are incomplete from um, Codemasters. So it is what it is. I'm sure they're they're working on it. Uh, but right now it is incomplete. So for instance, if you come over here to input and you're looking at your steering wheel, oh, you know, real quick, connected devices, Codemasters did a wonderful job on this. It recognizes everything uh, automatically. Uh, my AccuForce didn't have, had, didn't have to do any setups. I did, of course, map some buttons, you know, customize the buttons for myself, uh, but everything else worked fine. And uh, recognizes my, uh, of course, my uh, Fanatic Club Sport V3 pedals, my uh, AOLog sequential shifter, and the handbrake, and my two DSD button boxes, as well as even my um, uh, Husenfeld uh, shifter, which actually I've been using the uh, AOLogs actually right now because I've been testing it out uh, for the review. Hopefully, you already saw the unboxing and, and mounting up. So. Uh, anyway, uh, it recognized everything. I just set up some key buttons and stuff. Something to keep in mind uh, when you are setting up something like an AOLog shifter, uh, since I'm here, is I go ahead and set everything to not bound and just change the gear up and gear down to that. Now, the nice thing is is that I can have two setups here going. Uh, if you're familiar with using Fanatic products and stuff and you connect um, your Fanatic shifter into the wheelbase, uh, you can just switch back and forth between paddle shifters and and the sequential shifter on the uh, on the club sport stuff. Well, with the AccuForce or with this particular game, also I think R Factor Two does it as well. Um, I can set multiple setups, so I actually have sequential setup and paddles all set up at the same time. So that actually works out really good. So I like that. Uh, but anyway, get on with the video. This is really about the force feedback. Just a little side note there. Um, when you come over here to the steering uh, steering wheel settings, vibration and feedback. First of all, I'm using Sim Experience, so um, this is for really Sim Experience users, uh, Sim Commander 4 users with the AccuForce V2 settings. Uh, <laughs> we're getting a real good rubbery feel on the track uh, with the settings that I'm running, but uh, I'm running foundation on it, steering foundation for everything uh, because these are just kind of crap. But the only thing you really get with the end game for their uh, for their game actually is is self aligning torque and um, uh, a little bit of tire friction and you do have some wheel friction uh, which just basically slows your your wheel down and tire friction is supposed to kind of give you that more of that uh, a rubbery feel to it suspension you you do get that um, and collision and collision basically when you're going over the the cattle guards and stuff that feels great and then uh suspension you just get a little bit of subtle rumbles but you'll see here tire slip and engine is turned off uh so it's, it has it came came aboard uh soft lock center and spring and stuff i leave off well it wouldn't matter what i have on here because when i go to the sim experience setup uh it'll override everything here because i'm just using foundation and it's not pulling anything from the game but I'm just going to show you these settings. If you just want to run uh, what's here, uh, self-aligning torque, I usually run around 40%, uh, wheel friction around 30, and uh, uh, tire friction 150, suspension 150, and collision. I'm usually running at 100 when I was actually just doing it from the software itself, right? Without uh, uh, Before AccuForce came out, with their Sim Commander 4 settings for this game. Now it's been updated for uh, three times now already. So, and they're still actually working on it to tweak it uh, even better. So for right now I, I got a setting that I'm pretty happy with. So anyway, I'm gonna go back to that, discard it. Cause like I said, it don't matter. 
All right, so let's go over to my um, Tim Experience stuff. So, and I'm gonna close this other view of me. <laughs> and these are my settings. Now, like I said, I get that real rubbery feeling in there. And there's a little uh, uh, jerking motion you get uh, in this game a lot of times. Almost is like when you go from a transition and a curve and it feels like you're in Neverland, it, like it goes neutral and then it jerks real hard uh, when it hits the next bump. It's like some latency in between there. And uh, that could be due to some of the graphical errors that are coming, the, the, um, the uh, freezing of the graphics. That could be part of that as well. But uh, it, for the most part, the graphics part is actually working pretty good. So uh, I'm not getting uh, too many of those uh, freezes and stuff. But here and there, I do get them. But uh, anyway, these are the settings I'm using. I'm going to blow it up here. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better move that over and you'll notice my smoothing is actually uh, fairly high on this I got 76 for the smoothing now this is the smoothing I'll explain these things to you this is the overall smoothing for your wheel don't be afraid to use smoothing uh, it, it definitely takes those 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 peaks out of it the peaks of the uh, of the torque curves from the wheel it pretty much knocks those peaks off the more smoothing you add the more more it knocks off to where you really don't have any peaks right so it's a fine balance in between them. It's not super critical, but you get somewhere in the ballpark. You can definitely tell when you went too much uh, on it, you know, with some practice and stuff. So, but uh, you notice here, I don't have game force feedback settings up at all because uh, I'm not going to run them. And uh, the things I did add, of course, is what you see here. Oh, let me go to device settings real quick. I am running the default settings. Uh, this overall smoothing here. Don't worry about changing that to try to match mine. Uh, when you change this smoothing up here to 76, this will adjust automatically. Stop spring 6%. Uh, degrees of rotation is at 900. And then uh, everything else off. Actually, you can turn that down to 540 as well. Uh, some of these I was running at 500, some at 540. Just depends on how much you know, motion you want going back and forth. So go back to the actual settings here uh, I guess I should explain to you why maybe a, a teaching moment here <laughs> not that I'm an expert but uh, reason you want to run default as opposed to high and responsive is because in dirt games like this it you know when you're going over rocks and gravel and all that if you were to drive on a gravel road yourself in your real car you're gonna feel a lot of your steering wheel just bouncing all over the place and stuff so uh, if you change these to a higher degree, say high or responsive, that motion back and forth is going to go even faster. And uh, it becomes uncontrollable, especially in, in a dirt rally game. So default's great. Soft is a little bit um, not quite fast enough. Default feels kind of the most natural uh, feeling. So uh, that's what I leave it as default. All right, let's carry on. Uh, AccuForce friction, add a little bit of friction there because when you're playing in the game, uh, there was a little bit of, not that there was no dead zone between center of the wheel and not, but I wasn't feeling quite enough drag. Uh, say probably the first, I don't know, 30 degrees worth, 15 per side worth. I wasn't feeling quite enough drag. Uh, so I increased the friction to 5%, 5.1 in this case. Um, and uh, fix that. So inertia had also increased that. That's at 10.98%. So that's once it's in motion, it goes in motion a little bit quicker. But it also actually works as a dampening effect as well, uh, because when your wheel's chunking over one way, yes, it's it speeds up going that way. But when your wheel tries to chunk back the other way, it ends up slowing itself back down. Uh, or it slows down the speed going this way so it can go back the other way and it ends up working as a dampener at least in my head that's how it's working uh, <laughs> it may work differently than that but that's kind of what I'm feeling from it uh, also the oscillations on moving I had to turn that on because I was getting a little bit too much jerk in motion and uh, so I turned that on and I have the max dampening at 50% on that one 100% uh, was pretty much default. Engine RPM, adjust that to your liking. 
I like 50%. Uh, I just turned it down 27 because you, know, you can just fill it off the line and uh, I didn't really need more than that. And some cases people think it kind of affects your uh, your feeling you get through the wheel and stuff. So I did all my testing without the engine RPM just to cut that out of the scenario. And um, so be it. and then I added it back in at the end just to my liking. And it didn't seem to affect any, any of my settings any. So uh, also steering feedback foundation is another one, 107% is what I run on that one. Usually on the uh, steering uh, foundation, Kind of the higher the number you go, the more wheel friction you end up going, but also uh, the less um, the less feeling you get uh, between the road surface and your wheel. It becomes even more dampened. So uh, you don't want to turn it up too high. Uh, obviously, you, you can't really... Well, I didn't try running it, but you could probably run the auto-tuning wizard on a track and, and let it auto-tune for you. I didn't try that uh, just because... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm lazy, <laughs> so I didn't try that. Uh, so I, I can just usually get a pretty good feeling with adjusting it myself here and then turning on this clip in motion here that you see and see when it clips and uh, and then adjust it back down until it stops clipping and test out a, a few different tracks at the same time. Uh, but uh, anyway, with in the steering feedback foundation, I was still getting those jerks every once in a while. And they weren't hard, but they were a little bit subtle. And uh, so what I ended up doing is turn on the oscillation resistance, which I think is around 5% normal. I ended up going to 7.46%. And that cut just about everything out of it. You do get a little bit of that quick reaction, or not really a jerk, but a little bit of a, a jerk in the opposite direction every so often with a really short wheelbase car. And they're just finicky to drive anyway, so I don't really like driving those. Uh, so, you know, this is what it is. But now, if if the steering wheel is too heavy for you, if you're a girly man and it's too heavy for you, you can turn it down from 107 percent down to like 80 percent. Okay, so if if it's too heavy for you, turn this on down. Don't be afraid. Uh, you're just gonna get slight uh, more feeling through it but not not a whole lot more 107 is, is, is pretty good you will actually ha uh, have less potential to clip which is great uh, but I uh, don't really hardly hit any clipping issues with this uh, in a lot of the rally stages with some more of the high-end cars and stuff that are booking it uh, down there uh, road bumps next one here I got it 101 percent well 100 percent now I have it at 100 percent and 100% uh, seems to work. I've tried it in a lot of different uh, sections. So 100% is working. And the settings that I went in there uh, with is bump contribution, 27%, road rumble contr contribution at 12%, and smoothing all the way up to 15. Max out the smoothing. I even went to start to add a filter in here, smoothing filter, but that was too much. So uh, I went away with that. Uh, it, it it calmed it down way too much. So uh, this is probably a pretty good compromise between them. As you go up with uh, bump contribution or the road rumble contribution, uh, the more that jerking motion you get. It's really particularly tied to the road rumble contribution. Uh, I think default on this one is usually around 28%. No way you can run 28%. Uh, without getting that jerking motion and, and just having a really hard time controlling your car. 12, 13% is, is 13. I like 13% a little bit more. Uh, I bumped it down to 12 because I was still getting a little bit of that jerkiness in some of the cars. Uh, so 12 was kind of a happy medium. Uh, 13 felt a little bit better. Uh, but anything above that was just too, too jerky in the opposite directions. Same thing with bump contribution. That's going to bring in the the actual bumps, uh, the harder bumps that you feel on the track and stuff, um, collision with things, stuff like that. You won't feel um, the uh, the categories anymore, though. Sorry, uh, you don't feel those. Uh, they don't seem to come through with the foundation for some reason. Although they're they're like over apparent when you're just doing the game settings. So if you want those, you could experiment with turning on the game settings. 
uh, around 20% and then turning this foundation down to maybe 70, 80%. I did do that as well. Uh, it works okay. Uh, but this is kind of more optimal as far as getting a good driving experience that feels more like a rubbery, uh, like you got rubber con contacting with the, uh, the gravel roads and of course the asphalt ro roads and stuff. So, uh, that was my settings for those and uh, I like it check it out and see the last one is the lateral g-force you don't have to turn that one up very much put it on six percent and uh, really like that uh, that and I left the everything default in the settings below that at six percent it gives you a little bit of that that resistance to turn back uh, uh, into the force because you get that g-force of your car moving in one direction and then they try to counter it back it it has a it has that extra resistance that feels very natural to have you know once the car's in motion in one direction and you're trying to counteract the other you sh these cars actually have some weight feeling to it and you can feel the weight in the car more when you turn on the lateral g-force it's actually really cool uh, when you turn that on because it, it don't take much of a setting but it de you definitely feel that difference so at least i do Anyway, that's the settings for it uh, right there. I will, so let me see, I'll run through a game and I'll twist the camera down here so you can see my wheel in action. Of course, obviously the game going as well. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun with it, so. All right, we are recording. So my camera's off center a little bit because I am gonna tilt this down and uh, that way you can be able to see the full wheel and you can fee see my uh, A-logs uh, sequential shifter and handbrake in motion. Obviously you'll see the seat, you'll see my legs moving around a little bit. But this is actually filmed a few days later after the first initial part of this video because I'm just such a busy person. <laughs> Home life is and work life uh, takes up a lot of time. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Uh, you'll get to see all the, uh, how my AccuForce V2 is reacting to the settings that I just showed you. Uh, I did tweak them just slightly, uh, slightly from what I just showed you here in the, in the last couple days. Uh, I perfected them even more, but they are uploaded, of course, to the Owners Club and on my Google Drive. So check those out, and um, as well as my uh, Next Level Racing V3 Motion settings are up on my Google Drive. Uh, links in the description there for you to go check out. Hopefully, uh, y'all like that. Uh, but uh, if you want some more videos of, of settings for the AccuForce V2, comment below and I will go through it and, and set it up for you as, as, as well as for myself, right? Uh, but I am looking for a very realistic, rubbery feel on the track and uh, I think I got it as good as I can get there with the foundation uh, right now with, with the uh, Sim Commander 4 uh, software. So. Brilliant software, love it. Uh, you will not actually see as much as what I am feeling through the wheel just because you are looking at a black wheel. <laughs> uh, but you can pay attention to the yellow stripe on my Momo wheel. Let's see where things are going though. But uh, I assure you that it does feel really good in your hands and uh, really enjoying this game with my AccuForce V2. So with that said, let's get into it. Tilt it on down here. And... Voila! Rock and roll, baby. I'll try to talk about what I'm feeling as I go, but we'll grab some handbrake. Got some vibration through the wheel from the motor, which is pretty cool because it does change depending on the cars. A little jerking back and forth. Nothing too crazy, but definitely you can feel the deformation in the track. That handbrake, oh, I love the feel of the front wheel through there. You literally feel your tires chopping away at that dirt from the side of the tires. Uh, so very impressive feeling, uh, to say the least. Uh, just like you do in a real car, if you ever went, not rally driving, but screwing around out in the back roads, <laughs> uh, you will know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, here we go. I love the water splash with motion because it uh, definitely pushes you forward like it normally would. Although I screwed up that turn. Handbrake early. 
Stair comes down slightly over the bridge. It's actually kind of smooth through here. Don't hit the wall. Oh, I hit it. You can feel the G-force on the tires through that. It is side loading. The tires really good. Love the G-force effect with the active force. Woo! Feeling it. Oh no. Sometimes I use my battle shifters, it's just a little quicker. <laughs> But yeah, you feel very connected with the road, which I really like. I think I actually have a flat here because my back end feels loose as hell. Yep, I bet I do. Let me see. Those my like my left, my right. Yep, <laughs> there is no tire there. All right, let's restart because you don't you don't get to repair your vehicle out here. For some reason that's okay it's just more video goodness I do have the motion turned up a little bit but down from what I initially was doing uh, seems a little bit more natural now but keep in mind in a rally car you should be thrown around fairly well Oh, I love that load on the front tires there that you feel with my Aki Force. It's like that G-Force load. You feel the tires scrubbing through the dirt. You feel that indention. Sometimes you get these little jerks. Uh, you can tell when it's like a clipping jerk as well as uh, when it's just your tire sunk down into something uh, in the dirt. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely... It's, it's freaking amazing, actually, how much feel you can get through the wheel. I gotta say, man, competitors out there have a lot to uh, fight against when it comes to the Sim Commander software. Now, I do have the Fanatic coming as well, and I will be doing a head to head on that one. And obviously, it's more in my favor. If I was to lie about my reviews and say, oh, the Fanatic blows away the AccuForce because I can make some affiliate sales, but I'm not that type of person because the reality is you don't really make any money doing this YouTube stuff. And I'm not driven by money, so in that regard with my hobby. Alright, feeling good. I love the, the load you get on these tires. It feels so good. It's not like when you jump off of these little hills and stuff and you hit the ground and it feels like, you know, wood hitting wood. I don't like that feel. I don't like to just be jerked around uh, for the sake of having forced feedback. I like to feel the road. I'm, I'm a driver that loves the feel of things. I think you're a faster driver if you work off of feel than you are off of sight. Although most of us are trained from the console video game days with a controller in hand to react off of sight to be fast. But once you grow up and move into <laughs> uh, more simulated racing, uh, oh shit. <laughs> I don't get a flat though. Oh my god, that's jerking hard. That's where a direct drive wheel can hurt you. If you're not careful, those sudden jerks, just like they would be in a real car, can put some extra stress on your body for sure, because I felt that in my shoulders. Caught me off guard. I can see why people say that this is enough force feedback from 13 to 16 newton meters because on some games like this, it is it is plenty. 
because I think with more, it's almost not realistic. Something doesn't feel right in the rear. Yes, I agree. But we're going to push through it. I may have to quit the uh, race early here. If the car is not sticking to the road enough. But this does have enough of an arcadeness to the game. Whoa, that was close. That I can uh, push through. Yep, that tire is gone. Oh, it sounds like, feels like the right rear me if I was a better driver I'd last a little longer now unfortunately you don't have repairs when you're just on the free play it is just uh, run what you brung hey it's holding in there though Woo! it is pushing like crazy <laughs> Shit. Not too bad considering I'm only on three wheels. But yeah, you can feel some bumps and vibrations through here. Man, this thing feels amazing. You get a very reactive feel, uh, especially with motion. So the whole back end of my car came up. When you have motion rig, uh, you know, your seat pushes you forward. You go for it like you're going to jump through the dang monitor here you're looking at. Can't wait till they have VR because then it's going to feel like I'm jumping out of my windshield. It's okay. I'll drive a little bit slower here since I have a, a three-wheeler essentially. <laughs> but it can also explain you know, some things that I'm feeling through the wheel. And uh, you feel all these little gyrations back and forth just like you would think you would feel. But in rally driving... Oh shit, I always miss this. You know, I've been down this road quite a few times and I still miss this turn. I like that jolt you feel through the uh, front of the wheel there. <laughs> you hit those signs. Pretty cool. Oh shit, I knew that was coming because my back end was just going, going loose because I have no tire. See, when you're going up this hill, if you ever went up a hill in a real car, you feel your tires grab the grooves of the road and try to move it around. And uh, sure, you get that with some other force feedback wheels, right? But it's almost like you feel the, like you're pushing the damn dirt away from you. <laughs> uh, it's not quite there, but it's pretty dang close. Oh, got to watch the rear tires going. This should be a, a bloopers run, huh? I promise you I do normally drive better. <laughs> but I have not had my practice in today. Not that my driving really matters. Really, the uh, what matters is the feedback that I'm getting uh, through this wheel. And relate trying to relate it to you in the video my watch thinks I'm working out <laughs> fun fun I like the uh, when you go to break you feel the push and then uh, since you know the uh, traction control system and all that stuff's off uh, you feel that push of the front wheel through there when you're braking. Pretty cool. <clears throat> that constant uh, rotation or self-aligning effect in here, which is only the thing, the only thing that the game itself will do correctly, correctly is the auto line, uh, auto uh, centering. See, now that's one, uh, but uh, that's one problem here with the AccuForce. But the game does a really good job auto centering itself, and uh, which is great. Let me see if I'm in the picture here again. Yep, I am. Uh, it does a good job auto centering itself in game, but like I said, I have all that stuff turned off because we're just using foundation, and foundation with the uh, sim experience works way better. Now, as you saw at the very end here, the only problem I have 
is that, you, and, and I know other people complain about it, is that sudden jerk that it gets at the end of the game. You can hold it to keep it from spinning or let it go and it'll spin to the stops. I have it set on 900 degree rotation, so you know you got 450 degrees it's going to spin to one way. Uh, that's the only issue. Uh, some experience, as far as I know, seeing in the forums, they know about the issue, so they are working on that as well. There has been, of course, several updates uh, in here. Oh, also earlier in the video, I said you didn't feel the bumps in the track uh, or the cattle guards in the track. You do actually feel them. Uh, so I guess I got updated at some point with the Sim Experience uh, software. Uh, because uh, I definitely feeling pretty strong. I said they're more of a natural feeling now. They're not too over the top feeling like they were with just the game settings set on uh, uh, suspension and collision turned up. Uh, so yeah, feels great. Uh, if if you are a fan of Dirt Rally 2.0, uh, I highly recommend a direct drive wheel of some sort. I'm rocking the AccuForce V2 right now. I'm loving it. I can get a very good rubbery feel in, so I am, <laughs> I, I'm really liking it. It's a, it's really good. Very impressed with this. I'm gonna be doing my three month review on this review, uh, on this review, on this wheel soon, uh, just to give you my impressions of, of what's changed in, uh, for the better or worse. So look for that coming. Uh, also, uh, yeah, that's it. We'll cut this video short. More great things coming to the channel. Uh, stay tuned for more. Let me know if you want to see more uh, settings, setups, and stuff for different games uh, with my AccuForce. And, of course, I'll share them uh, as much as I can with all the uh, Google Drive or the Owners Club for you. So, anyway, check it later. I'm out.